Walter, Ian, I swear to God, if you have my mask, there will be problems. There will be serious problems. You know I need that for one show and two of the haunted house. So, if you're doing anything with that mask, issues. Major issues. Bye. Oh, God. So, WWE 2K17. Visually, clearly a lot better than its predecessors. I mean, that can't be argued. They naturally update each and every time. And I'm glad that 2K is trying to do something outside of its usual sports motifs, even though uh, it's not doing too much in football as of late. Be almost 10 years soon. It's that great game. Damn. But, um, you know, there are a lot of really interesting aspects that they brought into this latest game. Like, what they have is the rollout system. If you're doing multiple man matches, like triple threats, fatal four ways, battle royales, things like that, where if one of the guys gets a big move hit on him, a lot like in an actual match, to avoid getting pinned or anything like that, they'll roll out of the ring. And this, it's to help cut down on some of the lag and things like that, which is really kind of cool. It, it still adds that proper vibe. And even adding other camera angles gets that gets more of that that genuine feel from an actual show which is awesome that's the kind of thing that we need if you want to immerse that crowd you have to give them the show it's not like they can just imagine or pretend that it's that it's there um they brought up you know, a new created system. You know, they're gradually updating what you can do and create, which is nice and all, but the thing I find funny is how they how they claim there's a bunch of new stuff, like, oh yeah, you can now create your own Titan Tron with, with, you know, music and whatnot. And trust me, we'll get to the music in a second, or should I say lack thereof. But 2K13 had a creative Titan Tron. Of course, it was done more in the... We're going to use highlights of your best match is and have that be your entrance, which wasn't a bad idea. And I would have loved to have done that in this most recent incarnation, but for some reason, the replays I was constantly getting were pinfalls. Or at least pin attempts, which just I found very, very interesting because whether I was giving or receiving an awesome move, it would record the pin attempt or the victory. Uh, ladder matches had the same scenario. I actually succeeded in having a an elimination chamber match where they did the whole spear through the through the chamber spot and all it got was me getting dragged out of the pod and the pin attempt which I found very frustrating because it, it looked great whether I was the one getting pinned or not it just looked great and I, I found that rather frustrating. Uh, a, another Elimination Chamber match that I did, I found a little more interesting because I had all the spooky dudes in the match. I had Crow Sting, Jake Roberts, Current Undertaker, Bray Wyatt, Finn Balor, 
Uh, I have one more spooky dude. I know I did. I, I think I had Kane in there. Like, current mask Kane, not, not corporate Kane. And when it came to the last three, it was Undertaker, obviously, Jake Roberts, and Sting. And between those three... I don't know if it was a glitch, or I don't know if it was a programming thing that they they fit in there. But anytime Jake the Snake would hit his DDT on The Undertaker, he pretty much no-sold it. Right? Jake would hit it late in the match, and Taker would just sit straight up. And yet when Sting would hit his Scorpion Death Drop, Taker was out. Like, he, he had the full sprawled out, just, uh, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How does that... How does that even work? I mean, yeah, Sting ended up winning the match, but how is Jake's DDT less effective than Sting's? It was just something that that definitely caught me off off guard. But let's get back to the whole creation thing that went down with this new mode. You know, oh yeah, yeah, we you can create you know your own videos and and whatnot, which you can, you can, and you can actually have scenarios, mostly from the in-game footage of, like, the quote-unquote cutscenes. And for a few that I, that I did, they, you know, I based it off of scenarios where it was like they were in a triple threat or they were interrupting a match, you know, doing a run-in, things like that. And that was, that was nice. That was fun. Because, you know, it's not like I could do any of my replays. Because the highlight reel for a moment was really sucking. Of course, this was WWE 2K17 version 1.01. Barely a week had passed since the game had released when I was trying it out. And, yeah, that's, that's what I got to work with. Both the belts and videos, on average, took between 20 and 30 minutes. Well, 20 and 35 minutes or so, if you actually want to put some effort into there and make it worth, you know, trying out and actually making something that will, that will surely be seen, whether it's just by your friends or whether you want to put it online. Character creation, however... <laughs> Believe you me, just the move sets alone, if you're wanting to be detail oriented, if you go into normal edit as opposed to quick edit, you're looking at close to two and a half hours. At least for me, that's the case because I was detail oriented. I don't want to just slop stuff together because I want to show that I put in the effort. But yeah. Close to two and a half hours, and it was... I was pleased. There are enough different moves, and there's enough stuff that clearly... They're not just sneaking on to WWE television. I mean, there's still a lot of pile drivers, even though that move's pretty much banned. And... There's still a lot of, you know, Japanese-referenced moves... A lot of CM Punk's old moveset still sneaks in there, like the what they now call the hammerlock short arm clothesline, where he, you know, he catches him in the hammerlock, whips back around, boom, sit out short arm clothesline. Um, the proper execution of the burning hammer is still in there, which looks nasty as all hell. Uh, Okada's Rainmaker is still in the game. And Nakamura's original move, the Bumai, is still there. Speaking of which, let's just let's just get to 
Shinsuke Nakamura, or as I like to call, where is he? As part of the promotional advertising, they never stated he was in Unlockable, they never stated he was going to be hidden in the game at all. I'm assuming he's in Season Pass mode, so when he shows up, he'll probably just be added to the system, so yay to that. I mean, I don't mind dropping a couple of extra bucks to get Nakamura added on. I mean, I'm sure later on they will they will do that with Goldberg to where all those who didn't pre-order because why? Goldberg? He's been in previous games either from the beginning or in you know, the story or season mode. You know, when you recreate certain scenarios so, why, why that's the thing now? I mean, don't get me wrong, to an extent he was influential. Apparently. You know, I mean, you know, to see a Jewish athlete succeed as well as he did in such a short amount of time is great. And the fact that he's technically been loyal to WCW, I mean, he did like one Japan show that I know of, and even then, it was, it was Goldberg. And you, you can't say that he isn't a legit badass, I mean, that's, there's no argument there, he's proven himself, but still, just... You know, you pretty much buried the guy at WWE, and now you're trying to bring him back? I, it, I'm, I'm just seeing Ultimate Warrior 2.0 here. You know, after years of pretty much saying he shit, he shit, he shit, you bring him back, you mock his legacy by giving him a short-term winning streak just to shut him down immediately pretty much burning the bridge with him him swearing off of you even saying that if he his kid wanted to go into wrestling he would do everything he could to keep him away from the WWE and now this I mean you just must really need to make a car payment, huh? But hey, I mean, you know, money does talk. And I know plenty of whores that have done just about anything to get that moment for Vince. Some are a little more talented and deserve a grander stage. Hashtag Joe Hendry. Others never should have been there to begin with. Hashtag go home, Ricky Starks, you're drunk. But, you know, it's kind of how it is. It's kind of how the business is. But does the game suck? It... I cannot say no. I cannot say yes. Because, as I stated earlier, when I acquired the game, it even said, next to the title, version 1.01. .01. And then, like other games, this will have a gradual update system. Hopefully we'll get some more hidden NXT talent being brought in. Like I said, um, we'll probably bite the bullet and buy Goldberg when he's brought in. I mean, they did the same for Schwarzenegger when you got 2K16 or 2K316 because they were doing a whole thing with Stone Cold. Which was still pretty cool. But...
I do have some gripes. First off, you know, we're trying to this this current age in WWE. They're really trying to show how how tough and actually athletic and determined and fight worthy female wrestlers are, or divas, or whatever they want to call them this week. And they have a nice variety. I mean, some of them still... I, I, I understand with Bailey's build and everything, that in itself gives her kind of a sideshow attraction vibe. The overly positive thing. She's not, certainly not, you know, an Amazon. And she certainly doesn't look like, you know, a girl who had to fight her way up. I'm not saying she had everything handed to her. What I'm saying is, she is the underdog of the women's division. And then you have, like, the fiery Irish lass in Becky Lynch, and who's doing this steampunk, like, undertone visual thing. She isn't, like, building things in a garage, but, like, the, the welder's goggles and her choice of, of gear-based looking coat and having steam just burst out as she comes out, I mean, that's... That's kind of cool, and then, you know, Paige with her alabaster skin, and, you know, clearly her cockney background, but she's trying to be more ladylike, until you piss her off. That's great. But am I a bad person for wanting to see them bleed? I'm, I'm, I'm not saying Lufisto levels by any chance. I mean, that she's in a totally different league and level. But we're only now getting our first ever, and this is the, and this is legit. This isn't one of those like, oh, in the new era, this is a first. As of this recording, this Sunday, will be the first women's Hell in a Cell match, which is a big deal. Like, big deal. They've never, they've never had that. There's been women's cage matches. There's been, you know, th there's been hardcore. I believe there's been a women's tables match at least once. But a women's Hell in the Cells match, Divas Hell in the Cell match, never happened unless you played the games. So, big big scenario going down with that, with two people that would fit that environment with Charlotte and Sasha Banks. And I I would just like to see a little more, you know? And once again, it's this weird double standard. Now, if you want to keep the division separate to where, you know, men can't fight women and, and vice versa, okay, that's fine. But if that's the case, then don't do that whole intergender tag match unless you're going to have a scenario where guy fights girl at some point. Even if it is cheap heat with some large behemoth heel standing over you know, standing over the the young plucky face diva, you know. I mean those those are always nice, those are always entertaining in themselves, but I would just like a little more. And then another thing I find funny is WWE keeps trying to promote that, oh yeah, we're, we're going in the family-friendly direction. We're trying to broaden our audience, which I don't have a problem with. But if that's the case, why do you even have blood in the game? I mean, yeah, when, it's, when you start off, you have to turn on blood if you want it. But then when it's there, dear God, is it there. I mean, I understand that one of the one of the arenas you can choose to fight in is November to Remember, an ECW promotion, an ECW production. But man, I don't even remember them bleeding that much over there. And I got to go back and watch Terry Funk versus Sabu in that 
barbed wire match and yeah cringe theater but and this it's so weird I mean and, and it's it's realistic it is realistic I mean they're smashing each other in the forehead over and over you'll see blood begin to build up on the knuckles of the assailant and then if they're left-handed or right-handed you'll show more dominant you know blood packing there if they continue bleeding late into a match like the the elimination chamber match where sting taker and roberts are all bleeding by the end you know it starts to dribble onto the chest and it legitimately like begins to smear down a little bit It's just like, I I understand that maybe more 13 and up gamers will enjoy the game, but maybe, maybe little Billy wants to, wants to try it out. Okay, cool. But this is just... It's like wow, like it's ins it's insane the level of bloodletting to allow. Now I did I didn't try lighting a table on fire like like previous games, which you can still do in WWE 13. So and I believe. You could still do it all the way up to 2K16. Didn't didn't try a lot, but yeah. And the universe mode was a little more enjoyable. Getting to design shows, actually coming up with a with an opening tron with proper music. Which, I'm still getting to the music. And I found that even though some of the controls were hard, to acquire the points needed for purchasing things in the game, which thankfully it's not all microtransactions, but they have a point system, um, the easiest way I found, for some of you who are still trying to figure out the new control scheme and are worried that it's affecting uh, your potential points, Simulate everything but promos, which is something new and different and unique that I think was kind of cool. Having promos. Actually cutting a promo. The downside is the choices fit everyone. There doesn't seem to be a slight variation Everyone's going to say they're going to kick everyone's ass, even if they're not usually very, you know, I'm an ass kicker type of person. But, you know, and, and not, not only that, like, seeing people like Bray Wyatt cut these promos is even stranger for the fact that you know, that's that's not, you know for a fact that's not how he would do it. You could see Randy and Triple H. And, and I mean both Randy, both Savage and Orton. Them, them having this type of promo. And they hear Savage just, oh yeah, and the animations of what he's going to do in the ring. Yeah! It's, it's all there, folks. But someone like Bray Wyatt with his, his weird form of, of riddles and, and haunting limericks and, and just that, that spectacle, it's, it's completely falling flat, unfortunately. But you can still build up easier with a good promo than maybe a good match. It's a nice way of balancing things out. I mean, unless you clearly know what you're doing, which 
I'm certain by the end of December we'll all really know how to make that game work to our to our liking. But just right now, I would really like a goddamn update. I mean, having a few extra places to dive off of, yeah, that's nice. It's cool and all. And having bringing back the kind of hallway altercation, nice. Even actually going into Triple H's office and having him like, whoa, what's what's uh, going uh, on here? Uh, you know, that's that's cool. It's a way to make a statement, right? Beat the shit out of a fellow employee in front of your boss. Then he'll know, hey, this guy, this guy, well, he's not calling in sick tomorrow, is he? <laughs> but the point system they have in the game is interesting because... It's not just for superstars. It's for belts and locations as well. Which is cool. I mean, yeah, all right. You have that. You can you can get November to to remember and if you if you have enough points, you can attempt to recreate something similar to when Taz fought Bam Bam Bigelow, which Bam Bam's in the game. He's at a, he's at a good chunk, I think like 25,000. It's like well within that. But some people were surprisingly expensive or inexpensive. Like, you have Alundra Blaze in there, which was like the four. Like, she, she was, she's the den mother to the divas. And I mean that in a nice way. I do. I just mean like, she was the woman we were pushing. We were trying to showcase more women's wrestling without it being titillation. I mean, we hadn't seen a lot of that since the days of, dare I say, Fabulous Moolah and Mae Young. And I'm talking in their prime. I'm not, not, what, not what we grew up with, where, where it was the two crazy grannies that could actually throw a punch and do a headlock takedown and make you go, um, um you know what, I'm going to sit this one out. I'm talking like back in their heyday when they did the, the one piece and it was a solid color. Yeah. Which is which is fine. It was absolutely fine. Doing that. But Alundra Blaze came along and reignited it to where it wasn't novelty. So having her I think she's like I I want to say 55,000. I I don't have a screenshot or anything for that at the moment, but I I want to say she's up there. Not 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 up there with Surfer Sting cuz he's like 60,000. Which is understandable. When it comes to WCW and you know, that level of competition from back in the day. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. You know, Surfer Sting like He's like 60,000, and then uh, Crow Sting is like, uh, I believe I got him for 45,000, while Modern Sting, they have him at like 30,000, currently retired Sting, or latest incarnation of Sting. It's like 30,000. So still, they're up there, but some of these were just like, like shocking. One, Larry Sabisco just being in a game. I don't think he's been in a game in quite a while, if ever. I uh, off the top of my head, I don't recall Larry Sabisco getting to actually be in a modern wrestling game within the past twenty years. But they've got him at like forty-five thousand, which he deserves. He deserves. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. I'm just saying wow to the whole idea. And of course. Various big shows, you know, they have some that, that fluctuate. Vintage Kane and Corporate Kane, two separate entities. Um, I think Corporate Kane's like 10,000. And then Vintage is supposed to be like 25, if not 30. I think. But, 
Yeah, like, like, Zabisco being in a game is awesome. You know, bringing back Arn Anderson again. Uh, like all the all the original members of the Horsemen to go with Flair, and they have legitimate young Flair, like skinny Flair, and that and that's something I find interesting. Is in these later games when they would bring Flair in and it'd be older Flair. I mean, don't get me wrong, he could still be prob he probably can still go. If you just say, Do you know what? Fuck it. Get the get the paramedics ready. Rick, you're having a match. I'm sure he would jump in there and still put on a good twenty minute match. With at least fifteen minutes of being actual wrestling. But like they have young Flair and he looks skinny. Now there there's none of this where like they've added muscle like he's I mean he's still flair like he's got he's got the build the hair flow the the ha the hair oh god the hair is still shitty as ever <laughs> the hair and clothing animatics are just oh god they're everywhere sometimes they're wonderful and sometimes it's oh god 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 ah oh. but yeah just just have it, having those people on such a high level is great. But then some of the low-level characters are a tad shocking. I mean, okay, having Big Boss Man at 5,000 points... Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess he's... a symbol of the times? But even then, he contributed... And they and they only had like one version of Bossman. They didn't have when he walked around in SWAT gear, you know, like like proto uh, a way of phrasing. It, I guess you, yeah, like proto proto shield. No, they just have like when he was wearing his old state trooper. Ah, I'll, I'll work in the prison system. Kind of kind of look with his nightstick. You know, he, he's, he's 5,000 points. But then, Rick Rude and Dusty Rhodes, 5,000 points. Rick Rude and Dusty Rhodes, both worth 5,000 points. The Bushwhackers together maybe come out to 12,000? But Rick Rude and Dusty Rhodes. Oh, and, and they got Rick Rude's build right this time around. But Rick Rude and, and Dusty Rhodes each worth 5,000 points. I, to, to hear that the son of a plumber from Austin, Texas, a man who helped associate and build five different wrestling promotions, Daddy, a man who was still influential well after his his retirement and all that jazz. You mean to tell me the American dream is only worth five thousand points? I just I, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it, Daddy. I, I can't believe it. Five thousand Dusty Rose, five thousand points. Seriously. And point seriously, I can't believe that. I've been thinking about that for three hours now. And then this lack of music, you come in there boasting that P did it help do the soundtrack. It's not any new music he's done. And then you got these new artists on the cover and everything, like in the menu selection and whatnot. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Let's hear those music. Those songs ten times talking about lock John biting down 
for goodness sake. And then, and then with all of that, with all of that, that same music ain't even in the game? You mean to tell me I can't get any of that music for any entrance theme? In the old days, any music that was used was used everywhere. I mean, they weren't the greatest songs in the world, but they was used. And I can tell you this, that is somebody was always using that music. Because it meant something. It identified with you and you identified with it. Might not be your ideal soundtrack. And maybe, maybe y'all just thinking that everybody's downloading their music directly to their systems nowadays. So that's where all that cool music's coming from. Well, daddy, maybe if that's the case, then you shouldn't even have a goddamn soundtrack. Seriously. Seriously, this is hard times. Hard times, I'm telling you. We living in hard times right now. Get your act together with all this. My goodness gracious. Trying to distract me with the five, 5,000 points. Just that road, 5,000 points. You gotta be trying to distract me with that so I don't talk about that lackluster music. Shame on you. Shame on you. Game stops all trying to hype it up like... Like it's all gonna be so super grand and all of that. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The whole thing in universe mode where you opt to be a Paul Heyman guy or whatnot is interesting. But where was this suplex city we were being promised? There was supposed to be a mode y'all was talking about called suplex city. So where is it? Cause I've been I've been playing on the PS4. Ain't nothing about Suplex City popping up there. So I want to know where is it? Was it coming out later? Is it is it like Nakamura not being there at, at the start? Is that what's going on? Is it a seasonal thing? Cause I'm curious. Where's this Suplex City? Hmm. Where is it, Daddy? Where is it? You tell me. You tell me. You go on. You go on and tell the son of a drummer. That's me, not that the road. The son of a drummer. You go ahead and you tell me. Where is it? Where is Suplex City? Because I'm actually curious to go visit. If I can, if you will. Suplex City is a game mode. And then you don't even deliver. Who you think you are? Hmm? You think you them destiny people? Hmm? You 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 giving us the old version of No Man's Sky? Come on now. Where's Suplex City? We want Suplex City. You promised it to us. You used it in the marketing. Where is it? Shame. Shame on you. Shame on you. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. So, yeah. Is it a letdown? It is a modern game. That's what I can say. It is a modern game. That's, that's what I can say. Is that bad? On one end, yeah. But we allow this to happen nowadays. Nothing's ever really complete anymore. It's always gradually in development. And you can get away with that on a TV show, because it's intentionally broken up episodically. They work with what they've got. 
If they don't have the budget for a mind-blowing explosion this season, hopefully they get enough ratings that they can get that budget next season. But this... This isn't like an indie platform. If this was an indie group that was given permission by WWE to make a game, I could understand it. And would allow it for the fact that they're working with what they've got. Hey, we wanted to give you this badass triple threat mode. We're almost there. We just need a little more money. We don't want to give you an unfinished product. Okay, cool. Yeah, no. That's fine. But... You're a triple-A publisher. Give us something. Something really worth... giving a shit about. I mean, come on. What are we paying you for, then? Seriously. 5,000 points for Dusted Rhodes. 